your attention, please. It's time for the final countdown. <laughs> the show starts in... A very good evening to you, good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you are joining us from. My name is Ambassador Benjamin Ousu Ansa, and you are warmly welcome to the Power Impact Series, proudly brought to you by the African Season uh, Speakers Network. And today, we want to salute all fathers in the house, those that are joining, those that are about to join. We want to say a very happy Father's Day to you. If you are a father, if you are a father figure in anybody's life, we want to celebrate you today. Today is our day, and today is your day, and we say happy Father's Day to you, and you are warmly welcome to this show. And on this show today, just hit me in the chat box wherever you're joining me from. Just let me feel you. Let me feel the energy in the house. Tell me where you're joining me from. Give me your name and where you are joining us from. And let us also showcase you a bit on the show today. It's a Father's Day edition. Most of the times people do talk about fathers, but we do confuse that word with father. <laughs> this day on this show, we're going to look at it, whether it is a father or it is father. And with me on the show today, I have wonderful people that are going to help me do this discussion. I'm not going to do it alone. I'm going to have wonderful people joining me in this discussion. So, ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome the first person that I have in my studios here. Ah, 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 ah. He's going to talk a little bit about himself, but hey, let me bring to you the man himself. I call him the maestro. He is no other person than Mr. Isaac Omari Kurante. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, ben, ben. <laughs> I'm good, Ben. I'm good. I trust you're also good, doing well. I'm doing well. Before we move on to any other thing, we want to say on behalf of the African Season Speakers Network, we want to say a happy Father's Day to you, Mr. Isaac Omari Crantin. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good, 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 good. And Mr. Isaac Omari Crantin. He is the director of Safe Marriage Foundation. Simply put, Samaf. He is also a banker by profession, but he is a director by passion. <laughs> and he is an author. And one of his books that we'll be looking at is this book, Loving Like an Eagle. <laughs> he's going to tell us why, I mean, he's telling us to love like an eagle. Upon all the animals and upon all the birds. He chose an email. No, no, so we will come back to this one. But before we come back to that, I also want to bring on board. I don't want any bias. I don't want people to think that I am one-sided. We have also in the house. Let me introduce to you my next guest. She will let us know from the outside and from a female's perspective of who a father is or talking about fatherhood. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome also to the stage, Dr. Thelma Frimpon Mensa. <laughs> Doctor, how are you doing? Hey, I'm good. <laughs> so we want to wish the man figure in your life a happy Father's Day. <laughs> I want to also wish you, on behalf of all others, a happy Father's Day. <laughs> right. All right. So that is the team that we have in this evening. This is the live that we're going to do. So, Mr. Omar Quentin, I want to start with you. Okay. A little bit about this book. Okay. What is this book? Really right. about? <laughs> Thank you, Ben. So, um... Good evening um, mm -hmm. to everyone on the call. I just want to say a big thank you to, to Ben and your team for doing a great job. Uh, all we are all seeking to do is to touch base with, with everyone and to 
impact what we have to other people as well. So it is all in our quest to to build lives, make make it better. And then for me, um, looking at it from the relational point of view, um, I'm looking at what we can do to um, build up marriages, build up relationships, and to get them to a place where God wants it to be. So I'm excited to be part of what um, you are doing. Um, loving like an eagle is something that God placed on my heart. And um, you'll be asking ourselves, why um, the eagle? I was trying to look at other birds, but I didn't um, get some of them. You look at the hawk, you look at the parrot, you look at others, Charlie. And some of them, they can cross over from one level to the other and do all manner of things. I was trying to look at something from the eagle that would help us to, to build our relationships mm -hmm. and to build our marriages. Um, and some of the values I got from the eagle was just um, awesome, awesome, awesome. I looked at other bears, I did not find that. And that was the main reason why I, I chose to write on, uh, about the eagle. You and I also know for a fact that we've heard a lot about the eagle, uh, particularly about their managerial uh, competences, about their leadership mm -hmm. qualities and all that. But we, we, we've never um, talked about their, their family life, their love life and all that. And Love Like an Eagle seeks to open us up to the other side um, of the eagle. In this book, um, you'll find eight strong principles. Um, that relates to our marriages and to our relationships. And basically all that um, um, you see in this book is to help you build um, your marriage and relationship to the level that um, we all want it to be. So um, that is uh, a bit about the, the book, Love Like an Eagle. Um, I mean, it brings out the marriage lessons from um, the King of Bears. Right. It brings out the, la the, the love of married lessons from the king of the birds that is the eagle wow that is beautiful and i'm i mean some parts of the of the book i mean talking about a lot of i mean uh, synergy how how the, the, the eagle looks all kind of come together help the female to raise up sure. the eagles sure. or the babies sure. i mean um that, that you also really try to compare that together with the husband and we mm. are selling the husbands today so from that part from that part we want to just moving straight away straight to <laughs> our topic for the day sure. fatherhood or father from mm. your point of view where you sit who is a father <laughs> okay so uh, thank you so much again uh, ben um we've had various uh definitions and uh various perspectives on on fathers um uh, when you called me i was just trying to put something together uh, for an acronym that would stand out for the father. And uh, I got the first one, which is being friendly and fair. And so if we're looking at the attributes of the father, we are looking at someone who is friendly. That, that means we're able to connect very well and uh, enjoy the, the issues of life with your, mm -hmm. with your children. And again, in the process, you, you are also very firm. It means that you you ensure that the right things are done. You don't compromise on the things that would not other well for the growth of your own children. So um, the F for me um, stands for being friendly and being firm. And then the A is uh, availability. Uh, sometimes availability without being useful um, can also be um, uh, turned down to other things. So we we want to plead with fathers to be available. Available means um, you are spending quality time um, with the family, not being available and still not being present. And that is questionable. And then I also looked at the T, which is trust. So for every father, um, there's a high level of trust that is required um, from you, um, from your wife and from your children. We need to exhibit that as fathers as, as we move on. And then we have the H for me, which is help. So every father, uh, must stand in the place um, of help, being able to reach out to your 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 spouse, being able to reach out to your your children, helping them to grow from where they are to the next level. Yeah, the E stands for encourager. You need to be the father who is able to bring all of them along, and encourage them, not um, 
get to the place of um, discouraging and, and saying demeaning words about your spouse and about your children. So you need to get to that point where you encourage them. When things are tough, the father figure must stand out um, to encourage um, your spouse and, and, and your children. The final, uh, the final point, which for me is very, very critical, is the role model. Um, if you don't demonstrate um, the right kind of um, father or um, parents to your children, uh, you are creating a lot of um, challenges for all of mm -hmm. us. So um, it is important that we come to that place where we exhibit the right kind of lifestyles, the values um, must stand out clearly so that we can get to encourage um, our young ones um, to move in the right direction. So um, beyond all of this, we are looking at um, a father who will be there for the family, a father who uh, will support the family, a father who will provide um, for the family, a father who will teach and nurture, uh, a father who will support and, and, and lead the way uh, and to support the entire family uh, as well. The other word is also quite interesting because that one, I mean, I don't know why you came up with that. It sounds the same, but I mean, that it, it is very distant when you are far away from, from the real object. And, and for us, we're looking at the, the real meaning of the father and not to move away farther from uh, your responsibility uh, as a man. So basically, uh, that will be my intro uh, for now. Thank you so much, um, Ben. Right. Thank you so much, Mr. Isaac Omaru Quarantine. Thank you. I love the way he was looking at the second word. <laughs> but that is okay. We're going to dive deeper into it. Thank you for the uh, the acronyms you've given to us for the word father. This is real uh, gym kind of thing. It, it's, it's, it's marvelous mm. and it's amazing. Right. Mm. So I want to say hello to Dr. Telma. Doctor, can you hear me? Hi, um, I can hear you. Can you also hear me? I can hear you clearly. We just need to hear doctor speaking to us. So, doctor, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm very well, thank you. Unfortunately, my light just went off, so um, that's why my camera is also broken. We are Please cool. Pardon. We want to hear you, so we'll hear from you. All right. So, um, as we back, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we can now zoom into the topic of the day? <laughs> because, uh, ladies and gentlemen, earlier on when I was introducing, I didn't get to sure, um, yeah, my name is Dr. I'm the lead consult for the G services. Um, my background is finance, strategic planning, business advisory and coaching. Um, I am a mother of four, a wife of one husband, since we are talking about that. <laughs> a wife of one husband. I <laughs> coach and mentor. Um, yes, I'm, I'm passionate about the ministry of parenthood. So it's a good time to be here, especially on a day like this. Right, thank you. I love that part. He is the wife to one husband. I love that part. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that's Dr. Thelma there from Paul Mensa. And then she gave a little bit about herself. Thank you so much. And hey, 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 our sacred president, all the way from Kumasi, I have in the house. Uh, Mr. Richard, Richard Amuzu. <laughs> Richard, how are you doing, sir? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> by grace, by grace, I'm doing very well. Thanks for thanks for having me today. And greetings right. to everybody online. Greetings from Otiko Koso. Otiko Koso, one. One. That one. is the one <laughs> for you, Mr. Richard. Okay. So uh, a little bit about Richard also. Richard, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and then... Uh, we also okay, my name is um, <clears throat> Richard Tatamuzu. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm also the lead consultant for Positive Solution Consult. We are into training, research, and also we are also into capacity building. And um, I'm also um, married with only one wife, and I have three beautiful, strong soldiers, three boys, and. Um, 
Uh, quite apart from that, I'm also uh, a man of God. I also do ministry small, small, but not in a full time. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much. He's also married to one wife. One <laughs> That's good for you. Right. So we'll move straight to Dr. Thelma. Dr. Thelma, uh, we, we're looking at that word, Father. How do you see that word? Or what is your opening remarks about fatherhood? Uh, so I would say a father is, first of all, a man who is matured, has taken on the responsibility of fatherhood, and it's not only about being a but a father is the one who sees fatherhood as a ministry because he knows he's the head of the home, just as Christ is the head of the church, he sees himself as the head of the home. And then he lives up to that expectation. He also serves as a role model for his children. He knows that his children are looking up to him, and so in whatever he does, he makes sure that he sets the right example and he knows that apart from the children, um, the wife is also looking at him. And so in everything that he does, he has this at the back of his mind. He's cautious of the repercussions of his action as well as the consequences. Right. right. Thank you so much, Doctor. Straight to you, Mr. <laughs> Richard Tete Amuzu. That same question for you as your opening preamble also to the topic of discussion for today, fatherhood or father. Okay, thank you very much. Um, in the first place, when you talk about a father, a father in simple terms means a source. Um, <clears throat> a father, it's a source or somebody who, who provides for the family spiritually psychologically emotionally and materially so the moment we call up you call somebody a father it means that the person is a source who is ready to support the family spiritually the family physically emotionally psychologically and material wise so the word father uh connect all this to that talk and in addition to what my other uh panel members are supposed to talk about when you talk about a father father it's somebody who is also ready to um support the family and also one critical aspect is that father also serves as um somebody who teaches and guides the way for others so in other words you are more like a leader and apart from a leader your father is also more like a foundation on which all the family rests upon so because you are the one which all the family is going to look up to and depend so the moment you are called a father it's it's it brings about the title or the idea of responsibility you know, when you're talking about, I mean, Father, it is something that we don't take it lightly because it's something that God himself also uh, respects and accord a lot of seriousness to it. That is why himself, we call him Abba Father, meaning that he's the source for everything. So the moment we, we, we start tackling about the issue of fatherhood, then the issue of responsibility must come in. So when we call you a father, you must be ready to show up that you are the source for the family in all the areas i've mentioned on the spiritual the physical the psychological emotional and then the material needs of the family you know it is easy for any adolescent or any adult to give birth because i mean you can shoot and give birth but <laughs> for you to be a father meaning that you are ready for a responsibility you don't just say that i've given birth and that is what makes me a father no Biologically, yes, he sees you that you have given birth. But until you assume the position of responsibility as a source for the family, you are not a father. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much. Until you assume that position to provide for the family, <laughs> you can assume that title as father. But, but Richard, has, has, has this, uh, has the father figure kind of thing 
be missing in our society is the father figure or the father missing in this society that we have ourselves in. Hello, are you here with me? Can Sorry, you I missed that part. I think the that trip. Sorry, yeah, I, I missed asking, that part. Please, can you repeat I was it? asking, I was asking, is the father or that father figure that we're talking about, is that figure missing in the society now? So is that the father okay. figure is what? Is it missing in a community Is it missing now? in our society? Hello? All right, right. I was asking Hello, sir. the father figure. Can you hear me, Mr. Richard Amuzi? Yes, I think right. I'm hearing you now. Right. I was asking if the father figure is missing in our society. Um, okay, if I get you, the line was not that right. good. But right. okay. are you saying that is the father figure missing in our society? Yeah, that's the question. Okay, okay, good, good, good. Yes, 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 yes. To some extent, to some extent, that fatherhood uh, uh, figure is, uh, in a way, missing in our society. One of the things that normally, that, that is uh, uh, making fatherhood very critical is that you, right now, um, the issue of antisocial biases, the issue of criminal, the issue of people finding themselves in prison, people being on the streets, people... I mean, going wayward in, in, in to some extent, or it's linked down to the father because some of them couldn't get a godly father or a good father to mentor them, to teach them, like the attributes some of my, my, my panel, uh, my colleague also said, to serve as a role model, to train, to discipline, and to groom them. That is what has led to many of the people being street children, many of the people being uh, vagabonds in courts, and then all these. Uh, people find themselves in prison because that issue is missing to some extent because some people couldn't get fathers to father them, to mentor them, to coach them, to serve as a role model, to, to lead their way and to provide to them. So they find their own way, some way, somehow to survive. And in the course of surviving, they find themselves living all sorts of life that has led them into a situation like this. Some of them find themselves, ended themselves up in prison all because they couldn't get a good father to guide, to mentor, to train, and to raise them up in a standard that is accepted by the society. And that is what is happening. You know, recently I read um, an article about something that is happening in, in outside the country, that there was one guy who was sentenced to life imprisonment. And before he went into prison, he asked the judge that, could he have a word with his father? So the judge said, why not? So he wanted to whisper into the ears of the father. He told the father to just give him his ears to whisper to. By the time the father realized, the guy has grabbed the ear of the. <laughs> wow. And what father was his was... reason? <laughs> okay. So, as we wait for Richard to connect to us, I'll pose the same question to. Mr. Isaac Omari Cranton. Mr. Isaac Omari Cranton, are you still with me here? I'm with you, Ben. Right. Uh, thank, you so, thank you so much. Um, for me, it's, it's, it's a tough and a difficult question. Um, I'm saying this because over time, we're still having challenges with the foundation. And when the sociocultural foundations are weak, ultimately uh, will affect everything that we do. Let me take you back uh, to the Garden of Eden. You have the man, you have the woman, and uh, you have the introduction of third parties. Okay, so in this instance, I'm talking about the, the children. And then the relevance of treating up a child the way you should go becomes very um, uh, critical here. And so the moment we fail to teach, we fail to nature, we fail to guide, we fail to teach them to do what is right, we are losing out, okay? We will get to a point where our kids and our children will begin to do what they want. Um, they will rebel, they will not listen and follow a certain path. It becomes a major challenge for all of us. And so there's a huge responsibility on fathers. And by extension, 
our mothers because the two of us will have to work together to build the home, to build that strong home that we all require. In the process, we help our young ones to know exactly what it is that they must do. And the process will build them up for the future. Now, when we have fathers who are missing or farther away, like your word says, it means that they are losing out on that level of covering, that level of nurturing, that level of teaching that would help them to be who God wants them to be. And so, I, to some extent, I would say that, yes, um, we are missing a lot of father figures in our society because of the challenges that we are going through. But again, we also have fathers who are present, who are available, who are doing whatever it takes to bring some level of discipline and training and teaching to our young ones. And to that extent, we are seeing meaningful progress uh, um, 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 in those uh, various areas. That is why for me, I do not want us to play down on Father's Day because we've seen a lot of fathers who are doing good things, fathers who are um, um, being good examples to their children, good role models to their children, helping other um, uh, children as well to grow, to be better people in society. And if we can all work on that path, I'm sure we'll help the entire process to be well planned so that our children will live up to uh, expectation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Isaac Omari Cranton. They will live up to expectation. Dr. Thelma. <laughs> Can you hear me, Dr. Thelma? <laughs> because we need to also get this from the mother's point of view. Is the father yes, I can hear you. <laughs> right, I, I, I pose the same question. Um, I, it's rather unfortunate that I yes, I hope I hold a different opinion to what the men have said. I think that compared to the, the time that we were growing up, the fathers are more relevant now compared to the previous times because personally when I was growing, my father was, I mean, he, he was never available and um, based on where I am coming from, I am coming from the Akan background, and we do the uncle thing, the wafa. So my dad was more um, available to his nephews and nieces than we, his kids, you know. Wow. But my big brother, my kid brother, my husband, I see them as more available in the lives of their kids. Now, um, I, I don't ever remember my dad visiting me in school, never had all my school life, you know. <laughs> I mean, not a visit, not attending meetings, but my husband does it when I am not around. He goes for PTA meetings when I am not around. Um, any program that happens in the kids' school, he's available. And I believe that apart from biological fathers, there are also, um, when it comes to the Christendom, there are pastors, there are um, officers in the church who are all playing the father role because we've all come to accept the fact that to bring up um, the children, it takes the whole society and not just the biological parents. And I see um, our pastors, I know the Muslim sects, the imams and their um, leaders are equally doing a good job compared to the old times. And so I think that uh, um, in our current dispensation, fathers are more relevant than they used to be. And they are, they are taking up the leadership mantle. You know, as the years go by, Father Day celebration is getting bigger. This year, I have seen that a lot of people have posted compared to last year. And that shows right. the significance of fatherhood um, as the years go by. And so based this on year, what this I year, heard, had even postings, just right? today. This year, we had a lot of postings. Yes, right. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, yes, so, yes, compared to previous years, which means that a lot of cognizance is being given to fathers and the fatherhood role. So... I believe that um, fathers, the father figure is not missing. And I am of the strong opinion that the day the fatherhood um, figure gets missed in society will die off. So there's no way the fatherhood figure is missing. All right, all right. That, that's beautiful. That's, that's coming from the mother's point of view. So it means the fathers are trying this time. <laughs> 
yes 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 they are doing an amazing job they are they are really trying they are doing an amazing job and i believe that when we give them a pat on the back it spurs them on to do more so kudos to um our current crop of fathers they are doing an amazing job right right but, but dr Tema, what has changed <laughs> what is the changing factor All right, let me let me let me let me pick let me pick uh uh Richard's, Richard's as I said uh, growing up my dad was not really available and I believe that because using my brothers as an example I have two brothers so because growing up their father wasn't there for them they have decided to be in the lives of their children because they saw the impact that it had on them and so they wouldn't want their kids to have the same experience and so they want to be more relevant in the lives of their children Wow, wow, wow. All right, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Thelma. Uh, Mr. Richard, <laughs> Richard, I'll bring you in here now. <laughs> okay. We okay, have we you. had a lot of postings this year. <laughs> well, you are, you are, yeah, that is very true. That's very true. And then one other thing that is also accounting for that fatherhood uh, responsibility, uh, being more, um, I mean, visible in our dates so or currently, it's because of the level of education that is currently also going on. Now, we realize that the level of literacy is also picking up. So among the elite, I mean, people really understand now, fatherhood is not just about giving birth, it's about taking up responsibility. And it also goes beyond just the normal putting money and just paying fees. It's also about being there for them, also trying as much as possible to also identify yourself with the, your children so that all the time they need you, they can have access to you. And then also trying to also support them in any way, like the women have been doing, because mothers will always be there for their kids, especially like um, Doc was talking about, PTA, school, helping them with the assignment and all these things. I mean, with the level of um, literacy that is, I mean, going on of late, a lot of, I mean, the elite and a lot of fathers have taken up the responsibility and they have known that, yes, it goes beyond just the money, but it also have to go with you being there for your children and then also supporting in any ways, especially when it comes to even the household chores. It also happens that way. Yes, I think for that one, I, I perfectly agree with Doc on that line that yes, fathers are rather are now doing well. I mean, gone are the days that when uh, kids are, when we are celebrating Father's Day, we think about towel for your fathers, but now we are all having, I mean, share of the whole, I mean, booty. So yes, it's going on, but that also stands that yes, there is more room for improvement because among the elite here, this one, there's a level of understanding and all that. To me, for instance, I take pride, especially in attending to my boys. Um, I have taken a responsibility that every morning I'll be the one who would bath them, dress them up and take them to school. That is if I'm there, I travel a lot, but as far as I'm home with them, that is the responsibility I do. And I take delight and that creates opportunity for me to bond, bond with my kids very well. I, I pray with them, I, I, I share, I mean, stories and everything with them just to create that bond. So that is also another thing that is really changing the dynamics of the Odin approach of missing. Notwithstanding, what I'm also saying is that there is also still that trend that is also been happening, especially with some uh, communities and some rural setup that still need the education still need to go down well with you because you could see a father who is a farmer and the wife being pregnant at the same time carry a baby at the back and at the same time carrying loads of i mean wood from the farm and they are going home and all the father does is just to hold the cutlass and the woman has to carry all these loads in addition to the kids and all that you know it, it's happening to some extent and then some of them also don't think that there are some things are left for women that has to attend to that the men don't necessarily have to look at those things you know so the education still have to go on so like father's day for instance we still need to sensitize the public and also need to encourage the fathers that know fatherhood is beyond just uh, the giving birth is beyond just the matter of saying that I'm, I'm i'm in the house but with you don't even support you don't show so much care and attention for the children you don't set up good examples for them because you could see a father who is fighting and beating the mother in presence of his kids and these are not things that are supposed to happen you know so i believe that they need more there's more room for improvement and then um 
education still has to go on so that at the end of the day uh, people will still know especially the men will know that no fatherhood is a whole ministry and responsibility in its own and we must brace up for that task right thank you so much mr richard amuzu so i bring on mr isaac omar quarantine on that same on that same point that was raised i mean um richard said something he was saying that the, there's been a lot of education now, now mr omar quarantine is it um yeah. uh, has it been that uh, the men didn't know this or they they are run away from their responsibility that we had to do a lot of education to bring men to that stand to now embrace their responsibility <laughs> for for me i mean it, it's a good one um i believe that it is good enough to learn from the mistakes of others um i may say we are young fathers um we've seen the way our fathers lived their lives in the past and if things didn't go very well for them it is important that we learn as fast as possible so beyond the awareness beyond the education i think that we all have learned a lot from the mistakes um, of the past now to a large extent men know that when you cook uh, is eatable okay to a large extent, <laughs> the, the accounts will tell you, <clears throat> okay, we all know that it is good to, 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 to watch, you know, we call it acts of service to help and all that. So, I mean, gradually we are all learning that, look, it, we are in this, in this together. It is not just about um, your wife alone doing everything. If it's a PT meeting, like doctor said, um, the men are available. You go to the hospitals, men are available to 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 seek health care for um, their children. So I think gradually we are seeing significant improvement in in the way um, men or husbands relate uh, to their children. I also love what um, my brother from Osekum said. Uh, the bonding part, it is very, very important. And I want to submit to all husbands on the call. It is natural for our wives to bond with our children. It is natural. It comes just like that, effortlessly. But for us, the husbands, we have to be deliberate about it. Because she will carry the baby for nine months. She will breastfeed the baby. She will feed and do all manner of things. So... I mean, you always have a head start before we, 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 we join the queue. So you have to be intentional. You have to be deliberate about it so you can connect with them, bond with them, and then move it from where it is to another level. So I agree with all of them. We have come a long way. I think I'm seeing very um, 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 significant progress from what we used to know in the past. And that is gratifying and, and good enough to see that we, we are making uh progress thank you yeah so so is it uh, the education part i still want to be on the education part <laughs> is it because we receive a lot of bashing that is why now men are trying to change okay <laughs> so so ben it's all part of the game what we need the end result is that we need change okay for example what we do at the same marriage foundation is one key model we are we are seeking to help fathers and mothers to live right. Okay, so it's a continuous thing. Each day we are having programs, each day we are having encounters, each day we are connecting, having dip those difficult conversations, all in our quest to, sh to change the narrative and to move people from the place um, of, of ignorance to the place of learning. So it, it, it is everything. Each day of our lives, we keep learning. And you and I know that we want to be better. I mean, why? Why do you want to be in a relationship where uh, you are not happy and you you, you are sad all the time? It, it is not something you want for your life. Emotionally, it would even drain you. So gradually, we, we are looking forward to doing what is right, looking at avenues where we can grow, we can be happy, and we can move on to the next phase. And that is why what husbands um, were not used to doing in the past, they will do that now. Because once you do that, there is fulfillment, you are making your spouse happy, and you love yourselves, you live happily, and, and life goes on um, in that direction. So for me, it is uh, very critical that 
we all move in that direction as husbands to, to keep going and to keep doing what is right. It, it is for our own good. And I'm sure you're also enjoying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> we are all enjoying because now fatherhood has taken a new twist. It has taken a new format. It has taken a new shape. Oh, thanks to all this maximum number of uh, education we're receiving. And as my brother said, yeah, there's a lot of education going on. Oh, listen, our wives, all the passion has, has shaped us. It has put us in the right shape. So right about now, don't go around, hang around, share the page. We're about to take our first commercial break. And right after the commercial break, our discussion on father will continue to find out to see whether the word is father, father or father. So hold around, don't move, just move. Need a spark to kickstart your innovation? Looking for thoughts and talks to get things moving? Wondering how to navigate a future full of change and uncertainty? With the eye-opening stories of digital disruption, extreme customer centricity, organizational innovation and global shift our collective of speakers mcs and moderators will shift your perspective meet our speakers for booking and interviews contact us on 0246-054092 or send us a mail info.afsysnet at gmail.com you can also follow us on all social media channels at afsysnet global african season speakers network influencing the next generation of africans right uh welcome back to the power impact series uh, and today we have in our studios uh mr isaac omari granting dr Thelma frimpo mensa and then mr richard Thete amuzu and the whole discussion or the whole presentation today is on fathers have we seen some changes over the past years about how fathers have uh, been live the life about how fathers Cater and then give shape and give protection and provision for their families. Do we compare or when we compare fatherhood in the current dispensation to the years before, are they the same? Do we have some differences? Is your husband behaving as your father? It's a question. <laughs> and helping me to do that are these wonderful people in the studio that we, we're talking about. That's all topic. Now we move to that next part of the question that we asked. And I'll start with Mr. Richard. Father, father, I mean, Omukopa, they are away, they're far away. <laughs> what was most fathers to be farther away from their families? Aside all that we've spoken about, what are some of the, some of the contributing factors that causes fathers to be a bit far? or move further from their families that they are having. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I think one of the factors is that, you know, godfathers are always uh, struggling or fighting or working hard to put food on the table for the family. They are always on the move. They, 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 they don't want to go the length and breadth of every corner to be able to get food to come and put on the table. And by so doing, they, they, they cut themselves off from the family. And that is another area we need to look at. You know, it's good to hustle to be able to put food on the table for the family, but it is also best that you maintain that connection and the bond with the family. Because if you are busy searching for money, busy making money, busy, I mean, hustling, trying to send, I mean, make, I mean, put food on the table and that connection is lost. You can't pay all their bills, you can pay all the fields, you can get them all the nice foods and clothing and whatever, basic amenities. And at the end of the day, if you, the father, you are not present to be able to show that role model, to be able to train, to be able to discipline the, the, your children, it brings about that you being far away from your children. And that is another issue we need to look at because most of the time, we are always, I mean, moving to and fro, hustling, trying to get food on the table. But by the time we realize we see our families even once in a month or twice in a month, we send them everything, but we are not close to them. And that is another issue we need to look at. Secondly, I think also in terms of some people in quote, um, some myth or some culture is also another contributing factor. 
because in some cultures, fathers are seen as just God or worship. So, I mean, woe betides you to go to your father and ask questions or discuss that. Uh, today I went to school and a, a, a young guy told me she loves me. The moment the father hears about that, hey, she starts pounding on you. Hey, what do you mean by that? And they start frowning and shouting on, on their children. And that makes the children always quail. I mean, even mothers are even afraid to come to the father because I mean, in some cultures or in some settings, fathers are seen in quote as to be fearful. I remember one of the days my my one of my um, my kids, I mean my firstborn, approached me and said that, Father, why? Uh, we have been told in schools that fathers are always in quote fearful, where the mothers are always, I mean, nice to us. But yours is different. Why, 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 why is it that? And I was asking that, what do you mean? He said, our teachers told us that sometimes fathers are always stern, very disciplined. Right. They I, don't I, easily open up. So uh, it makes it very difficult for children to approach them. But as for you, you always talk to us. You always play with us. You're always with us. Why? You know, so I have to take time to educate, I mean, my boy that no, gone are the days that it's used as such. But now it is not so. Fathers are always. Right, right. Uh, that, that That's beautiful submission. So. I want to bring on um, Dr. here. Dr. Teva, are you with me here? <laughs> Dr. Teva, Dr. Teva, can you hear me? Hello, yes. Doctor. Right, right, right. So, I mean, we're talking about the things that causes fathers to be far away from the family. And then uh, you were talking about growing up, your father not being around. Uh, what do you find out about uh, me? What were some of the causes of, of, of causing your father to be far from home or to be away from home? Uh, since doctor has dropped, I want Mr. <laughs> Isaac Omari Cranton to just pick this one up. What, what, what are some of the things that are causing fathers? What are some of the things that are causing fathers to okay. really be far away from the family? I wanted Dr. Chama to uh, I mean, speak more on this because she, she gave the earlier... Uh, submission that growing up the father was not mostly at home i don't know about you mr omari Quentin. how was the upbringing how well was it when you're growing up was father at home or father was far away from home most of the time and what but, were some of the reasons far away and i think it, it applies to a lot of us here um the the work life situation is so demanding um i mean i i pity parents in the cities because um, we wake up as early as uh, uh, 4 a.m. We force our children to also do the same. Uh, some of the children um, finish their homeworks in the car. Uh, they eat, they take their breakfast in the car. Some of them even sleep in the car. Before they get to school, we drop them off and we also um, move to our various schedules. We work hard all day. For some of us, we don't even see our children until the next day because someone else will go pick them up. Someone else will take care of them. Someone else will work with them through their homework and all of that. So it, it can be very tough and, and demanding for a parent in this day and age. And that is why we have to be deliberate about spending quality time with our children. Else, work life alone would, would finish you up. And for some of us who think that oh, I'm working so hard um, to be able to take care of their needs. But trust me, um, there are two things we need as fathers. There is a, the, the hard power and the soft power. Okay, so the hard power, it's easy to do because once you work, you have your salary, you can fix a few things. That's the hard side. But the soft one has to do with how we impart into their lives, that which will empower them to be able to face um, the challenges that will come their way in the future. So the work-life situation is very important. If we don't bring some balance to bear with respect to our work-life and our home life, um, um, we're going to have problems. That is the number one thing that I, I, I have seen. Number two, again, for fathers are the issues of life. So sometimes life can be very tough for fathers. Very, very tough for fathers. They are trying to do everything possible to make a wife happy. It becomes more tormenting when the one you are trying to make happy doesn't see anything good in what you are doing. And so, especially when things are not going the way you want them to go, you are trying, you're unable to 
uh, make ends meet, you, 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 you are failing to do A, B, and C for the family. And I mean, Madame doesn't understand why it is so. It is another wahala for the man. And to some extent, it can draw them away from um, the family. Then the last one is a bit controversial, but I will plead with all women on this call, all wives on this call, never to say bad things about their husbands to their children. And I've realized that because there is a strong bond between mothers and their children, the children tend to, you know, uh, listen and, and, and hear them at all times. And so when you have an issue with your father and you are you are translating your anger and everything to the children. Look at your father, and they took up. Look at what he's doing, and all that. Your father is unable to do this, and all that. So gradually, I mean, you are you are you are creating that anger and resentment in the children, and that is why some children will grow up and never would want to even have a way with their father because their source, you know, has given them something different about the perception of their father. So emotionally. The man will be there, but he will be um, so far away from uh, the family. Okay, so I, I believe that there are more to this, but I'm looking at the work-life situation and bringing some balance to bear. Number two, the issues of life, uh, battling, uh, facing the husband, and then uh, the mother's input is also very critical in ensuring that uh, fathers stay or uh, move further away from um, the home. Thank you, Ben. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Omari Cranton. So I, I will bring back uh, Dr. Thelma to, to pick up on that point because uh, in her submission, she made mention about the father growing up, father being far away from home. And I was asking, what were some of the things that was causing father to be far away from home when we were growing up that you could share with us? Um, I think I would come from the angle where first of all would be work. You know, um, I mean, obviously, it's the father who works to bring money home to take care of the home. And so sometimes they have to work extra hard or go the extra mile. And so first of all, will be work. And also the lack of bond, you know, the, the, the bond that exists between children and father, most of the time, it is not there. And sometimes, um, fortunately or unfortunately, society has created fathers to be more like monsters. And so even when the kid is at home and is doing something that any other person can um, correct the child, you are told, you wait, your daddy will come and meet you. And so that painted the father as a different picture altogether. And so kids were always afraid of their dad. And so that bond was not there. So kids were happier when daddy was not at home than when daddy was at home. So because that bond was missing, um, um, kids did not see why or they didn't, I mean, find it reason that daddy should be home. They rather preferred that daddy will go outside home so that they can have their field play. And so I believe that. And then um, I think um, Richard or one other person mentioned it, the kind of pictures the mothers paint to the kids. We mothers have a lot of influence on our children. And sometimes some women, um, I would say for lack of immaturity, when things are not going well between um, the mother and then the father, they tend to pin the um, kids against their dad, which is not supposed to be so. And so the mothers too sometimes paint a kind of picture that that tends to um, keep the kids away from the father and rather draw the kids to her. And so I believe that when mothers do that, it's also a way that if, if the man is going to come home and... Um, he's not going to be welcomed by the wife, he's not going to be welcomed by the kids, then he will rather find solace outside the home. And so treatment at home, how kids respond to their fathers and how wives um, treat their husbands or how the kind of picture the mother paints the father to their kids all contributed to the fact that made fathers stay away from home because they realized that um, other places were more welcoming than home. And they would rather be in another place instead of home. So, right. Thank you so much. Um, I want uh, Mr. Richard, uh, Sir Krumnana, to <laughs> to give us his final words because he has to move straight into another meeting. Uh, so, Mr. Richard Amuzu, uh, this is just for you to give us your final words about fatherhood and father and the, the father figure in the lives of. 
the family or in the lives of the children uh okay i think uh mr mr muzu is actually gone right so we'll take the final i'll be running off from mr uh isaac omari crunching if you're here with me um just want you to I, I want to bring something up for you um on this book uh you you were trying to describe how both the male and then the female eagle come together to raise their young ones and then, um, you, you 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 kind of dive into the point that um they run in sessions even during the incubation time when, <laughs> when the, the, the female eagle needs to go out to find out uh to find yeah, who the man is able to do that. i mean at, how, how how can we blend that one into our current situation now that uh, okay. i mean you, you're talking about the education part uh but I, I want i want you to throw a little bit light on that to let i mean fathers also see the kind of responsibilities that they have to perform not the ones that we've been educated on to do but the innate one the innate one <laughs> the ones we didn't see our fathers doing <laughs> okay so i think basically um on that particular subject we looked at two things first is the um the principle of synergy so uh, we said that synergy is a Latin word synagogues mean, means working together. And so um, the female eagle and the male figure, uh, eagle always work together. Um, there's no time where one person is uh, um, looking up to the other to do something. They are always involved in, in, in building their nest. Um, they are involved in, in training their young ones. They are involved in teaching them and equipping them to, to, to face the challenges um that will confront them in the future so everything about them um they do it together and um like i said in my book the only time you see the female doing something that the man is unable to do is the laying of the eggs so apart from that one um they do everything together uh, uh so the the female will, will, will sit on that for quite some time um the the male eagle will go find something to eat, come back within some stipulated hours, and then the female will also move out, go find something to eat before, um, I mean, they move in tents like that until the eaglets uh, are hatched. So that is the beautiful story for, for all of us as fathers and as mothers, we need to work together. Uh, Bible says that two heads are better than one, and I've qualified it, two good heads are better than one, because sometimes you can have two foolish heads, and it won't amount to anything. So when you join yourself to the other, um, the concept of synergy must come to play. Okay, so um, you are working together, you are providing together, you are putting your resources um, together and all that. And it helps um, um, both um, um, spouses to, 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 to move um, their relationship to the next phase. In terms of the parenting skills, I think it's also very important um, that we learn a few things from them, okay? So when they are building their nest, they have a, a beautiful way of going about it. Now they pick up some thorns uh, as the first layer, and then they put in some soft um, feathers and tissues, second layer, and then, I mean, in, in that order. So when the eaglets are hatched, they will be uh, enjoying themselves in the, in the, in the soft parts of the the nest they will enjoy themselves for some time now when it's time for them to to learn how to 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 fly um the eagle parents will start moving away the soft part uh that is showing in the nest so gradually they will get to where um, they won't feel comfortable because there will be thorns and other things and that would force them to start flapping their wings once they flap their wings and they move to the edges of the nest Ah, the first lesson will start. Uh, Papa Eagle or Mama Eagle will push them off. And once they push them off, I mean, that's, that, that, that's a tough one. It's like um, trying to um, um, get your children to learn sometimes um, through the tough way. Yeah, it might seem uh, quite unbelievable, actually. Why am I pushing my, 
my 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 child out like that. No, but they will do that for a purpose. They want them to learn how to flap their wings and then start flying as early as possible. In the process, they follow through with them. They follow through with them. If you're unable to keep flying, I mean, they spread their wings to catch up with you immediately. They bring you back to the nest, and the following day, you are going on another lesson. Okay, so it's a good way um, for parents, again, to also nurture and teach their young ones. Sometimes you go through the tough times, they get to understand the principles of leadership and parenting so that they don't think that all is well um, um, with us as parents. You go through the tough times and the difficult times, all in our quest to, to teach them to, to, to learn to be um, who God wants them to be. So basically, there are a lot of pointers in the book, um, but I'm sure... Um, when we get copies of it, you will really, really enjoy the, the the principles, eight of them. And I think that for each and every one of us, us on the call, you, you need a copy. You need to read through and see how you can spice up your relationship and your marriage going forward. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mr. Omari Panty. So, Dr. Tama, just a quick one before we do the wrap-up. Right. So, um, uh, is the way we're raising our boys at home contributing to the kind of fathers they become in the society, or it doesn't really matter? Yes, yes, yes. It sure does. It sure does. And um, fortunately for me, or I don't know whether to say fortunately or unfortunately, but I, I have only daughters. I have four daughters. So, <laughs> um, yes, but I, I believe strongly that um, the way um, parents raise their sons automatically will tell the kind of fathers that they will be in future. And so um, parents should be um, intentional about bringing up their boy child so that they are able to be um, good fathers and fit into society so that they don't become a burden for somebody's daughter in the future. I, I have a friend, a former um, roommate way back in uni who has four boys. And most of the time she, she does the cooking with the kids. She does basically everything with them. And so for her, her boys are going to grow up and know that household chores are not just for women. Right. You know, they can equally help with household chores. And for boys like that, hopefully someday when they grow up to become fathers, household chores will not be a challenge for them because they've been brought up to do it. They know how to cook, they know how to clean. And those are the basics of keeping a home. And I believe that every, every husband who is able to help the wife at home with the chores is a very special husband. It takes a special kind of grace to be a husband and come to that level to help your wife at home. And so, yes, how um, boys are brought up, I would say plays about 95% of who they turn out to be as husbands and fathers when they grow up. Right. right. So, uh, Doctor, so um, uh, why, why do we have a lot of girl-child education and we don't have boy-child education in the system? Because, hey, 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 at the end of the day, when we train the girl so well and then we don't have, and in quote, a good boy or a good man coming to marry them, then we go back to the whole equation all over again. This is why I dove my heart out to the boy's doctor at Ajilolo uh, <laughs> Mafu, and she's doing a good work doing the training for boys. Why don't we have a lot of boy training in the system that we mostly taught and focus on the girl child training and we live in the boys? Um, I think that is because um, years back, formal education was more for boys and then being at home or home training was for girls. That is what um, it was in years back. That is how come at a point there was so much noise about girl child education, which was to bring the girl child into the formal education, you know, so that they can be at par with the guys. But as you rightly said, we had concentrated on the girl child education at the expense of the, of the boy child in the sense that the boy child will have all the formal training, but then what is called home sense will be lacking. You know, you can, you can give a child, for, as for formal education, everybody, almost everybody can acquire it. But when it comes to home education or home sense, it takes a parent or a guardian who is intentional to say, I am training my boy child to go this way. I am training my girl child to go this way. And so as you rightly said, um, we've gotten to the point where now, thanks to all the women empowerment groups and all of that, formal education is quite cool for both boys and girls. 
what is left is to um, give the boy child the home training that they need so that at the end of the day, they can grow up to become men who are balanced. When it comes to the formal education, they are top notch. When it comes to the home training, they are top notch so that they can strike that balance. Because trust me, in the next 5, 10, 20 years, we're going to have women who will become wives but may not have time to be at home to take care of home like traditionally it has been done. Because now, since we are all talking about girl-child education, every parent is making sure that their girl-child is dedicated to the, to the highest that they can get to. And so in the next few years ahead of us, we're going to have women who have dedicated more time to school and achieving um, great stuff for themselves at the expense of keeping the home. And when we get to that level, when we don't have men, who are equally brought up to take care of the home, you're going to have a big challenge in society. And so it's, it's about time that we became intentional um, about striking that balance where we can have both our boy child and our girl child fully educated formally and informally so that there can be that um, partnership or companionship so that everybody can support the other and then we wouldn't have much um, of challenges in the home. Right, right. Thank you. So uh, I want Dr. Okay, before Dr. you come in and give us your final words and your final submission, I want to take Mr. Isaac Marie Crantin's um, view on what uh, Dr. just said about uh, <laughs> in just a few years to come, <laughs> we're yeah. going to have wives that I, are the corporate life. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, what I'm seeing is even beyond what she just said. Um, in some few years to come, it's going to be a very tough call for um, fathers and mothers and for parents in general, because um, we've started seeing the impact of what is happening. Now we have more um, women um, going to school, educated, um, taking up um, various roles in leadership and all that. And that is quite um, a good one but very challenging as well. In the process, you may have both parents moving out and then uh, uh, they are likely to give away some of the basic things we are supposed to do for our own children. So my fear is that maybe in the next 10, 15, 20 years, uh, parents may have to find innovative ways of getting to connect with their children um, in getting to spend quality time with them because we may all be very busy doing other things and we may come home late. It means that there's the likelihood that we are going to outsource a lot of the activities that would, you would, would normally connect us with our kids. That's the danger I foresee because now everybody's empowered. We are all working. We are all moving early. We come late and all that. And I mean, the truth is that our wives may go further than us and take other huge responsibilities. And so who who will be there to take care of uh, the kids who will be there to do all manner of things for them? That is the, the, the seriousness of the matter. And that is what I'm foreseeing, that if we do not work around it, find ways to, to deal with them now. I'm telling you, at the point, boom, our children will not know us because all of us are, are out there trying to do what we have to do to to support them and to support the home. And we may end up losing them to house health and to other support systems who would rather be relating very well with them and be taking good care of them. So, I mean, beyond what she said, I foresee a huge challenge um, coming up and we need to find innovative ways to, to deal with that as well. Thank you. Right, thank you. So final words from Dr. Thelma Frimpong, Mensa on this topic for the day fathers and not father so your final words and then there's any form of advice we have for our upcoming fathers and our emotion fathers <laughs> <laughs> okay so um before i come to my final words mr Franklin right. mentioned something that i wanted to touch on he mentioned that we might be losing our kids to house of trust me in the next 10 15 years even the house elves will not be available because now <laughs> Because of the free SHS, now almost everybody is going to school. Now it's very difficult to get households. Right. So even that is another challenge that we are confronted with. So 
we may probably have to look at AI to give us solutions for <laughs> that challenge <laughs> when we get there. But then <laughs> on my final words, no, I, no, I think okay, that... Um, okay, before you do the final word, what you just raised, mm -hmm. I, I, it's going to be a topic for another day. We can't just okay. scratch the surface because <laughs> there's going to be a time you're not going to get those house helps because yes, of yes. the nature of the situation we find ourselves in. The father is going, the mother is going. And then what or how are we raising the children that we are bringing up without any supervision on them or any any proper supervision on them because most of the house helps are helping take care of our kids or our children whilst both father and mother are away from home and now they've all been enrolled onto the educational system so there's going to be a huge challenge which we need to look at and talk about so i think that yes. is another discussion for another day Yes, but um, that said and done, I think that the only um, possible alternative will be that thanks to COVID, now we can work from home. There's virtual... Right. Right. Yes, so that could be the, um, the, the, the possible yeah. solution where maybe yeah. one parent would have to work from home and yeah. then keep an eye on the kids. But okay. a time is coming where we can't, we can't bank our hopes on households and nannies anymore. So right. for upcoming parents, they should be looking... At that, thankfully, some of us by the time we get there, we would have crossed that bridge. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. on, on my final words, I would say that it's been um, it's it's been an interesting topic, and um, going forward, potential fathers and current fathers should be intentional about being in the lives of their children. It is very very important for a kid who knows that he or she has the father's support. It speaks volumes. You know, um, growing up, I, I didn't have that father figure. Although my dad is around, he's still around. But I didn't have that father figure and that father bond. And trust me, anytime it's Father's Day and I see people post their fathers and say all those nice things, you know, it hits me. Like, I wish I could also do that, but I can't. And I, I could equally post my dad's picture and write the nice things, but that is not me. I, I, I mean, I don't know how to pretend. I can't say what is not, you know. And right. so fathers should be intentional about being in the lives of their children. The little time they get, they should try to spend it with their children and also get into the lives of their children. They should be intentional about it. It's not just about paying fees. For the fees, you would even give it to we, the mothers, to go and pay. And so sometimes the kids even think that everything is coming from mommy because it is mommy who buys it for them, whatever they need, they go to mommy. Sometimes they know that daddy can get this for them, but he will still go to mommy and tell mommy to tell daddy. <laughs> can you imagine, you know, how you have to tell mommy to tell daddy for you? They that need is how bad this is. <laughs> yes, because they are not so sure how to talk to daddy, to get to yeah. convince him to get them what they want. But they know that they can easily convince mommy or mommy can convince daddy on their behalf. And if we keep on like that, it will get to a point where kids cannot even come to their fathers anymore. But trust me, society will die the day the, fa the fatherhood figure also dies. And that shows how important fathers are when it comes to raising up their children. And so my little piece of advice is that men should be intentional about um, being in the lives of their children. They should make sure that whatever they have in them, they pour it into their children they should make time for their children, even if it's just five minutes a day. Let the kids know that there is mommy and there is daddy as well. And every child who has both the mother and the father figure, they are always different. They always do their things differently. And they always excel at what they do because they know that they have the backing of both mommy and daddy. And they can conquer the world or whatever they want to get to. Thank you, everyone. And thank you for your time as well. Right. Thank you so much, Dr. Tawa. But is there any program you're running? Currently, is there any program you are doing you are, that you want to share with us or that you want people to know about? Yes. Um, coming Saturday and Sunday, I am doing a, I'm, I'm running a workshop on CV review and interview tips. Wow. I, I have a partnership with a few um, companies that recruit. And the CVs that comes to me, some of them are just whack. So uh -huh. I decided to put a workshop together so that um, I can help people put their CV in the right way, the, the right way that will catch the attention of 
any recruitment manager. So that is my next project for um 25th and 26th. Right, right. And, and where is it happening? Uh, that how can people be part of it? It's virtual. I'm going to do it on Zoom because um, when it comes to in person, people don't really uh, people are coming from all dif different places, so it's much easier to do it via Zoom. So right. it's via Zoom, and it comes at a little fee of 150 cedis. So anybody who is interested can check me up on LinkedIn, Dr. Thelma from Paul Mensa, or um, my phone number is 0200-793-152. So anybody can reach me on that. And then if there is a group that wants to um, come on board, I can give them a discount. I also run um, corporate trainings. So right staff right. training and all of that. So if there's anyone on the call who would need something like that, just get in touch and then I'll give you a good deal. Thank you. Right, right. And she's going to give you a good deal. That's what Dr. Tema is saying. And we want to also appreciate you and thank you. And you know something that you did today that needs to be recommended and we need to appreciate? You were intentional about joining this call because you had some challenge, but you didn't allow the challenge to limit what you had to show <laughs> And then you just forced it through. And then I love your innovation. You gave in and you came in with an audio bit of it. And we love it because we couldn't just have afforded to miss this nuggets that you shared with us. So I want to say thank you and really appreciate what you did today and what you shared with us. We will not just throw them away. We are going to be intentional about it and we're going to move forward. So I want to say a very big thank you to you for your time and also joining this call. So as you hold on, we want to take <laughs> The final words also from Mr. Isaac Omari Kranti. <laughs> and before you go, Mr. Omari Kranti, there is a question here. And uh, someone is saying that where can we get one of the books to buy? Okay. So I think um, the, we have the numbers on the screen. Just, um, just call any of the numbers and uh, we'll get you a copy. Right, 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 right. right. Sure. Okay, so... Uh, now we want to get your final words <laughs> for the program and for the topic that we've discussed. Um, so thank you so much, um, Ben, for bringing all of us here for this very good reason. Um, I love the submissions made by Dr. Thelma. I'll, I'll link up after this program and then we'll discuss other matters as well. Um, for me, uh, I just want to encourage all the men on this platform in the husbands, um, that it is doable. We can really, really be the fathers that God wants us to be. We need to be committed to it. We need to be available, and uh, we need to do what is right to to make sure that we don't miss out at all. Again, I've said this, and I'll say it again. We have to be intentional about connecting with our children. It's very important. I've said that um, our wives. Um, don't struggle to do that because Sally, that anointing is there with them from day one. But for us, it's a lot of work. It's like someone who's been disconnected. You have to connect, okay? And so if you don't put in that effort and you're not intentional about it, um, you're going to miss out entirely. Let's, let's, let's spend quality time with the family. And then let's also learn to love our wives. I'm telling you, if you love your wife, your children will love you. It's as simple as that because see, they, they listen to them a lot. So just, you forget about them and just love their mother. Once you are connected with mother, I'm telling you, <laughs> she'll tell your story for you. Okay, then finally, um, let us learn to celebrate our fathers now that they are alive. Okay, um, we call fathers the source. So the greatest thing um, a father um, um, can do for you is to bring you here. Once you arrive, I'm sure that there are a lot of things you have to do yourself and all that. So let's learn to celebrate them now that they are alive. Don't wait till they are dead before you write that long tribute. And he was a nice man, he was this and this and that. No, for me, I think that um, we need to do that now before um, they exit, okay? So find time, let them know how you feel about them. If it's not good enough, still give them that feedback so that we get the opportunity to fix things before um, we we all exit here. So thank you so much, um, uh, Benjamin, for bringing us on this call. I'm, I'm grateful and I don't take this lightly at all. Thank you. Well, thank you. So uh, is there any program? So we just shared your numbers 
on the screen for um the uh, our viewer who asked for where to get the copies okay. is there any program you running soon or is there any program you coming up with so you can share with okay. us so um for me at the safe marriage foundation we have a lot um, of activities uh, coming up this year but what i can speak to is a couple's conference and a couple's getaway which we call the marriage connect uh it's the time to abscond uh kidnap your spouse away for three days and three nights okay so from the 26th of august to the 28th of august we are moving all the way to the elmina uh, coconut beach resort okay all the way in cape coast and uh we're going to leave here friday early morning uh on a bus so we'll, we'll, we'll have breakfast on wheels uh, we'll watch movie on wheels we'll, we'll listen to good music on wheels and all that we'll We'll visit the Elmina uh, Castle. We'll have our all-white dinner where we'll talk about sex and bedroom uh, matters. We'll have a bonfire discussion at the beach and, and the whole lot. I mean, three days, three nights. I mean, it's good enough to, to, to spend some quality time um, with your spouse. So if you are interested, we have barely two months to go. Um, you can connect with any of the numbers that um, Ben showed on the screen. Get in touch with us. And then we'll, we'll tell you exactly what you have to do so you can be part of this um, wonderful experience of a lifetime. You will never regret it. Um, you need to spend some time with um, your spouse uh, alone. And uh, I'm sure this will give you the opportunity to, to do that. So thank you, Ben. And uh, we hope to see you and Jemima on that call. So we get to enjoy. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so how often do you do this in a year? Because Dr. Tema says she yeah. loved that part. You said kidnap your your spouse. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh -huh. That one is very important. I mean, after all the wahala uh, working all year and all that, I mean, it's important we have this. And let me say this: for all the patrons I have um, uh, with the Save Marriage Foundation, some of them, I mean, this is a yearly. Uh, affair for them. So every year, I mean, they get to spend three days and three nights with their uh, significant others um, at any of our locations. So, I mean, you are all busy. We move around and all that um, with our kids and all that. But I mean, once in a year, decide that you want to spend um, some time with your with your your, your spouse, okay? Uh, so just abscond, just kidnap someone, your, your significant other actually, Go somewhere, go have real fun. You come back revived, revitalized, re energized um, for the days ahead. So, uh, doc, Dr. Dr. Thelma can also join us. You know, I'm sure she, she, she will love the experience. <laughs> <laughs> Please, we, uh, we will discuss it backstage. <laughs> sharp, 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 sharp. We, we we have others for singles and all that, but um, that will be in this December. We call that one the Singles Connect. So that will be a time for uh, the singles, and uh, we'll, we'll just equip them with uh, all that they need to prepare for marriage. And so that is also there. We have a time for the family to pray. We call that the Prayer Connect. So we bring all the the, the I call that the variables in the family. So mother, father, children, house help, everyone. We come together. Uh, the first Saturday in every January, uh, and uh, it is it will be time to pray and to seek the face of the Lord as we prepare um, for the year. Then we have the step of love. Okay, it's a romantic walk. Um, we, we 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 undertake a walk with our spouses. I mean, have fun, and after that we have breakfast, and then we move on. So there are a lot there there are a lot that um, we do at the Save Marriage Foundation, and we would love to have all of you join us. Thank you so much, Ben. And thank you, Dr. Thelma. I'll link up after this program and we'll talk. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much, Dr. Thelma Frimpon, Mensa, and um, Mr. Isaac Omari Crantin. And then we have uh, um, Mr. Richard Tete Amuzu dropping off because he had to attend to another meeting. We want to say a very big thank you to you all for sharing with us this wonderful and beautiful nugget about fatherhood. And we don't need to stop here. We need to continue it. And then we need to bring that figure back into our society. I want to say a very big thank you also to Dr. T, who had a fault for me last week when I was not around. And that was a massive program, Dr. T, hosting our Grace 
uh kwashi on this show it was a mega one i wasn't here but i was following you far away from where i was i want to say thank you to that thank you brother for holding up for me and letting the program run out and also thank you to the african season speakers network for bringing this and sponsoring this as we always say come on board if you want to sponsor and also if you have to sponsor just sponsor so that we reach billions of eyeballs around the world to share these wonderful messages with them as i always say dreams are in levels make sure you get to the top level of your dreams of that I want to say a very big thank you to you and have a wonderful week god bless you meet us same time next week on the power impact series where we bring you the best and only the works thank you god bless you have a wonderful week